overhead cranes can be quite expensive. How much are you gonna pay for the crane that you need? Today, crane specialist Chris Whitney sits down with us to give us some basic price ranges and help explain the factors that will affect the cost. Hi Chris, thanks for joining. Pleasure to be here. So, I think right off the bat people wanna know some basic numbers, that's why they clicked on this video. So I'm just gonna run through some cranes and you tell me a basic price range for how much they're gonna cost. I know that not all cranes are gonna be the same. Some might be out of this price range, some might be higher, some might be lower, but just give us a starting base of what people can expect. I wanna to touch a little bit briefly on pricing today versus pricing three to four years ago. Uh, what we saw once the pandemic hit is materials availability and uh, just the, the sheer cost of those materials has gone up roughly 25 to 30%. We've, okay. seen, we've seen even higher than that. Jib crane. For a typical jib crane, freestanding, you're probably gonna be looking at about 20 to $25,000 with the installation. A footer would be required for some of the larger capacities and larger uh, size jib cranes. So that's gonna add another probably 15 to 20,000 on top of that. Column mounted, wall mounted, uh, you know, in your one to two ton range with a 10 foot span, those are gonna run you with installation around 10 to 15. How about a single girder bridge cane? Okay, single girder bridge crane, again, you've got your, just a single beam with your hoist riding underneath. Um, nowadays, uh, a five ton, 40 foot span crane is gonna run you roughly $40,000. Once you get up to like a 10 ton capacity, just to gauge what your, your price difference is, those are about $65,000 with installation nowadays. And does top running or under running affect the price? It does. The components themselves, not necessarily going to be too much difference from a top running to an under running. Okay, and how, how about a double girder bridge crane? So double girder, you tend to see roughly 30 to 35% increase in these uh, off of a single girder crane. Uh, so nowadays, five tons gonna run you about $60,000. A 10 tons gonna be closer to 100. Engineered gantry crane. So engineered gantry cranes are, are kind of a, a different animal. You've got different types. You've got a single leg gantry where you've got one leg that runs out off of, on the floor and the other side of the crane runs off of a runway that's attached to the building structure. You also have a double leg gantry where you've got two legs and it's not tied to any structure whatsoever and it runs freely on, on the rail and the floor. 10 ton single leg gantry, uh, one that we've done in the last couple of years, was about $130,000. Um, so uh, double leg, you, you can expect to see an additional probably thirty to forty thousand uh, dollars due to the structural changes of the system. Okay, and how about like a basic monorail crane? So basic monorail uh, again, similar to an underhung crane system. It's going to either be mounted off of the building structure or it's going to be freestanding. Um, one ton, twenty-five foot long monorail. You're going to look at a, a price of about fifteen thousand dollars for a ceiling hung. For one that's mounted on the floor, is going to be around twenty thousand. Again, to gauge you a little bit on a capacity change, if you double that to a two ton, ceiling mount's gonna be about 20,000 or the same price as a floor mounted one ton system and about 25,000 for a freestanding. Okay. And then maybe explain a bit about what a workstation crane is and then give us some prices for those as well. Sure. So workstation cranes are ergonomic systems. The track is enclosed. So your bridge end trucks, your trolley runs inside of a track. Uh, it is lighter materials. So it doesn't put as much load into the building because the, the structure itself is lighter than a rolled steel beam. A system like that, if you look at a one ton, 20 foot by 25 foot system that's just supported four time you know, in, in the corners, a uh, system like that's gonna run you about $30,000. Two ton system, uh, you're probably gonna be around, I would say $40,000. Uh, if you put a freestanding structure into those, you can expect to see probably about a 30% increase in the price, if, if not a little bit more than that. All right, so you just threw out some pretty big numbers. I did. So maybe some people who haven't done a lot of research yet, or maybe this is one of the first things they've clicked on, maybe they got a little bit of sticker shock. So can you tell us a little bit why, why they are so expensive? Absolutely. So cranes are not just a piece of process equipment. It has a safety function, right? There's a lot of variables in there that will drive the price of a system up. Uh, capacity, speeds, um, and duty cycle is probably your most paramount piece of that equation. So basically duty cycle is the percentage of time that the crane's going to be in use, right? It, correct, plus 
the percentage of weight being lifted. Got it. When you start looking at an overhead crane and putting one into your facility, you want to look at how you're going to be using it. Uh, that is the first thing you should really be addressing when you start looking into purchasing an overhead crane. Look at your process, how many times you're going to be using it on a regular basis. Um, you know, we have a lot of clients where we, we go in there and they're normally using it a couple times an hour, but there's times where if they're unloading a truck, it's being used you know, 16 to 20 times an hour. So you got to balance all that out and we've got to figure out what the true duty cycle of that crane is. So a class C crane, you typically will see about 50% of the capacity of the crane. So a five ton crane is typically going to see a two and a half ton or less load on the hook on a normal basis. Once you get beyond that 50% uh, of the crane capacity, that's when you start looking at the higher duty cycle cranes. Uh, the other part of that again is how often you're using it. The class C crane can do five to 10 moves per hour as, as a, a normal baseline uh, when determining your duty cycle. Once you get beyond that, if you get to 10, 20, 10 to 20 picks, you gotta look at your bearing life and your motors to make sure that they can handle that additional duty. What about environmental factors? Do they play a role in the price of the overhead crane? Absolutely. A standard set of crane components can work in a temperature controlled facility. 10 to 15 degrees up to 140 degrees is normal operating temperature, especially with a crane with drives on it. So once you get beyond that, uh, you need to start looking at it. If it's, if it's outside, well, what part of the country that that crane is going to be outside? If we're putting a crane in Wisconsin versus a crane down in Louisiana, completely different climates. Mm -hmm. So you need to look at air conditioning, you need to look at heaters, depending on where that crane is going to be located. The other side of that is the weather that it's going to see. Rain, snow, uh, or even just a lot of sun. We've got to put the components on that crane that are going to withstand that environment. The other side, uh, with regards to uh, our environmental concerns, would be, is it food grade? Is it going in an area where we can't have sparks? Uh, those are two major concerns that are going to drastically change the price of an overhead crane. And what about the building? If you're putting a system into a building that is already in place, so you've acquired a building, you know, you're renting from a new facility, you need to either look at whether the building can handle the load that you're going to put into it or keep the building independent. A lot of uh, customers that we deal with, the landlord will not allow them to mount a crane off of the building because you're drastically changing the structure. So what we typically do there is we will need to provide a runway system with that crane. So you're not just buying a crane, you're also buying the support structure that goes along with it, which will again drastically increase mm -hmm. the price of a system. Does the job that the crane is performing, does that affect the price in any way? When we come in to look at an overhead crane system that you're looking to purchase, we're going to dive into what the application is. What are you going to be lifting? Uh, are there any attachments that you need? Vacuum lifters, uh, below the hook lifters, any, any sort of uh, componentry that we need to also include with the crane system. Uh, in addition, you're talking about radio controls versus a push button. Again, those are all factors that can change the, the pricing that we've discussed already. Now, what about installation? How does that affect the price? Ideally, we would love to have free and clear access and a, and a blank canvas to work with. Any, any artist would, right? We have to bring in mobile equipment that needs to be able to pick a crane off of a flatbed truck and mount it in the air. That requires a lot of space. You know, these, these systems here, depending on our on the size are also going to need overhead clearance for the boom of the mobile crane to be able to pick the crane and set it on top of a runway if we can't do that from underneath you know if it's if it's too high uh, or there just isn't enough space to do that we've got to be able to pick from above there's been times where we've actually had to have the customer give us a new skylight that they weren't intending so that we can actually make a pick from outside the building through the skylight to actually lift the crane because we didn't have enough space. There's obviously equipment out there for the installation that we can use uh, in tight spaces. Those also come with a price tag as well. Once the crane's up there, are any extra costs gonna come with that? You have crane suppliers that will provide a full turnkey price with startup and load test. That is 
all part of a package that you want with the installation of your crane system. Um, once you have your crane in, you're required as a owner to load test your crane. Um, a common misconception there is that the crane supplier has to load test it. It's actually on the ownership of the crane. We will typically include that as part of our package unless we're told otherwise. So um, what you want to think about there is a standard crane nowadays has variable speed drives on it. So you want to set those drives. That's something you want to do while the crane installer is there on site with you. So once you have the drive set, you also need to set the limit switches on your hoist. So you don't want the block running up into the hoist frame and damaging the components of the hoist. You also don't want that hoist to be laying on the floor. So those, setting that limit switch keeps that hook from going all the way to the floor and laying down and also up to the hoist frame. You also will have limit switches on your bridge and trolley travels that you need to set so that you're not ramming into end stops at full speed. Uh, the other side of that, once you've got all that done, is getting the, the crane load tested you're gonna need weights. So uh, you, at minimum, you need 100% of the crane's capacity up to 125% of the crane's capacity to, uh, to do a proper load test. But that's something you wanna make sure that you have accounted for, either having the crane manufacturer do it for you, or you've got it lined up once the crane is installed. So is that gonna be included in the quote? If we're performing an installation, we're including the load test in there. You can provi either provide the weight for us or we can include that in our proposal to have certified weights brought in to perform the load test. So how does automation and things like that affect the price? So automation is kind of uh, an interesting one. We are well versed in that arena nowadays. Um, what I would say is it uh, is going to be completely customized by application. I know it's kind of sidestepping the question, but there is technology out there these days for basically anything we would need a crane to do and also allow it to talk to some of the other machinery that somebody has in their facility. So again, I sidestepped the question a little bit, but it all depends on the application when it comes to automation. Okay, and then maybe what about basic safety features or upgrades that people can get? Yep. How does that affect the price? Is that a big increase, a small increase? Um, to, to be honest with you, when there are uh, other other features that we want to add, let's say collision avoidance. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a crane on a runway or multiple cranes on a runway and we're going to add another one. We can look at the capacity of the runway to see if it can take the additional load and have those cranes bumper to bumper or we need to keep them separated with collision avoidance. The basic system is gonna add somewhere between $1,200 to $1,500 for, for a collision avoidance system, but some of those more specialized systems can run you upwards of forty to $50,000 too, depending on how intricate and safe we need to make it. Okay, so this might be people's first stop on their shopping journey looking for an overhead crane. So is Mazella the most inexpensive option for an overhead crane? And why or why not? I would say not always. Um, we, have, we have times where we are the least expensive. Um, what I always caution to our customers is, as you're reviewing proposals, take a look at the scopes of work. When you see price differences, I always tell customers, set them side by side and make a checklist of the features that and, and scope of work for installation, startup and load testing that each crane manufacturer is giving you, you're actually checking to make sure that the scopes of work are apples to apples because the pricing isn't always going to be the same. With Mazella, we have a complete lifting package. We can provide training, we can provide rigging, we can provide below the hook attachments, service inspections, fall protection, any anything that you would need for that crane pre-purchase and, and post-purchase we can provide. So we do like to put in a full package for our customers so that they can see what the entire purchase price entails. Once you make the decision, um, what are some of the payment options that you have available? We have our standard progress payment terms. Um, they are pretty much industry standard. The other option is financing. Um, we actually work with a financing company that we can have uh, our customers touch base with and, and work their financing through. It's kind of up to the, you know, to our customer what they want to do with that, with that purchase. 
Hopefully you now have a better idea of how much your overhead crane is going to cost you and what factors are going to affect the price. If you're looking for more information, check out our free ebook, Overhead Cranes from Top to Bottom. We also have a buyer's course, Cranes 101, and we have a free overhead bridge crane quote comparison tool that you can use as you gather quotes. All of these are linked in the description below. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. If you have a question, drop it in the comments so we can get you an answer. Remember, safe rigging is smart rigging. My name is Ben. Stay safe out there.